In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Today I'm closing the week, the week of uh, spiritual nourishment. And I intend, even next week, to take us through the same as we prepare ourselves for the next novena. It is good to know that we are preparing ourselves for the next novena, which I will be able to tell you the novena that we are starting next. And I know you can almost guess that is novena for married women praying for their husbands. That is the next novena. We have two that are coming up. In fact, three. Uh, that is one. Eh? I'll be able to guide you on the other one. Still, we have got the firstborn uh, novena coming up. Firstborns and redemption coming up, coming up. Uh, for those who have not been able to participate in it. We've got it coming up, uh, so just get yourself ready. We've got the family deliverance novena, uh, the 40 days. Oop, not very, very far, still coming. Uh, we have got novena for businessmen and women. We have been able not to take it up, but we'll be able to, to have it uh, in our list. It is there. We have got so many of them that are coming. But I can assure you that the nearest novenas are two. The first one is married women praying for their husbands. And the other one is for our children. Not our children, but the other one is for business. <clears throat> I want to share with you today um, five ways, five ways of reinvigorating our faith. Every time we find ourselves lost and almost disenfranchised in terms of our believing, how do we awaken our faith when we find ourselves stuck. Number one is that go to church. Go to church. There is nothing as good as joining a worshipping community. Go to church. When you are feeling stuck in your faith, go to church. And if you can, invite another person to church. And make it a habit that you can invite someone to come to church. I know there are people who are lone, uh, lone ragers and they feel complete and whole to, uh, uh, on their own. But I'm saying that when you find yourself stuck, go to church. Step number two, pray that your faith can go from strength to strength. Pray that your faith can go from strength to strength. What does it mean? It means that you must intentionally be a prayerful person. Number three, get to know Jesus again and personally. Get to know Jesus again and personally. I keep on insisting on the need to have a personal relationship with our Savior because that is how it should be. I have said that uh, redemption is never done to groups or nations or congregations. It's an individual. Number four, make a pledge. Uh, we have tried to to, how do I put it, to remind ourselves on what it means to be in charge of our own faith development. Picking a manageable amount of faith-inspired goals to commit to and pray for help in achieving can be a useful way to build your faith. The pledge is not about money. The pledge is that I will follow my devotions, for example. I'll be going to church every day, for example. I'll be doing this in church, for example, making that pledge and following it religiously, judiciously, and with a military precision. Because it is you who did um, a pledge. And finally... 
living a sacramental life. We can't run away from the sacrament and we want to grow in our faith. It is not possible. And especially the sacrament of uh, Holy Eucharist and Holy Reconciliation, amongst others. Holy Eucharist and Holy Reconciliation. Why do we say that? Because sacraments are encounters. So, the more we frequent the sacraments, the more encounters we have with our Savior. It can't get better than that. Thank you. Today, it is Saturday, the 30th day. It means that today come, we come to the end of the month of April. I thank God for the gift of this month that is ending today. Tomorrow, we will be able to enter into the third Saturday of Easter. And I request you to join me at exactly 8 in the morning for us to celebrate Mass together. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Saturday. Thank you.